Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Catch a couple all big ticks and stuff. Nothing else matters. If you, if you don't win this one, you might as well just take it to the house. We're gonna get after them. Oh yeah, we're going to work tomorrow. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> All right, it's Friday, seven days before first day of the classic. It's our first pre-practice day we get three pre-practice days we get some off days for some media content things like that and then we do a an official walkthrough practice on wednesday another media day and then the classic starts so a little bit of unique week um we're gonna get out here and just kind of you know ride around see what the lake looks like it looks like it's high um from what i can tell already the water looks like it's you know got some clarity to it um a lot of cover in the water and the water temperature is not all that hot, so I really think it's gonna go down shallow this year. Even though it's in June and, and we're in Texas, we're gonna have some mild weather. And, you know, I'm excited to go fishing, excited to crack the code on Ray Roberts. Still a population of shad still living in these bushes. Maybe they're just getting done doing their spawn deal. Usually that's what it takes to keep them up here. And two, I don't know how long it's been. If it's been up for a long time, those fish might have already adjusted and moved back out. We'll just kind of have to keep everything on it. The only thing that sucks about flipping bushes is you're only some. usually look them pretty good, but there's just so much they can get wrapped around. Even with the best, heaviest line, best rod, and everything. Just sometimes you don't want to go out. I'm flipping a MBX 7.3 Extra Heavy Phoenix 20-pound uh, Seaguar Brazex in this, this heavy cover. It's a little bit stronger uh, or harder uh, fluorocarbon on the outside. It's still, it's still the same, basically the same core than Bezex, which I really love. But it has that little bit of extra like tensile strength for you know, rubbing against a tree or sawing on a branch whenever you got a fish on them. So it'll save you in those instances. All right, second bite I've had. This is main lake bushes. Might have figured something out. A little fighting frog. This is a, I think it's a retread. It looks like it's been caught for. Fat, healthy fish. Three pounder. I take five of them to start. <laughs> I've always felt like flipping bushes, it's not as critical when flipping grass, but flipping bushes, that braid sound going over a limb, they get conditioned to that. And I just, I feel like 
you'll get more bites, you know, on fluorocarbon. Now, if I'm flipping a big, heavy jig, something that's falling really, really fast, um, and it's not making much sound because it's falling so fast, I think braid will probably hope I got another one. Generally, um, after I catch a couple and I see what you know what quality they are, or whatever. If they're so small, I usually just set the hook until I catch a good one. But the first two bites were really quality, so I shook off I think three, and we got about a hundred yards from where I got the first bite. And I had a bite. I set the hook on it, and it was just a two pounder. But just just to kind of give me an idea of. What kind of fish are, are living up here right now? But I mean, typically in a, a normal elite event, we're practicing three days before the event. Right now, we're seven days out. So I'm, I really don't feel like I'm hurting myself by setting the hook on a few this far out. Um, you don't want to catch too many, but it's a whole lot different scenario a week out versus you know three days before derby day three eighths um i will go half sometimes but three eighths is just a good a good all-around uh, weight for a fighting frog you know if it's a little bit bigger heavier plastic it's going to fall slower i might go up to a half but for what I'm flipping. Now I'm gonna rig up a flipping jig, like a lot bigger profile bait on braid, and I'm gonna flip in some of these areas also. Just to see if, uh, if that might get a bigger bite. I mean, I'd rather hook them on braid, but usually when I'm flipping something lighter like this, braid's no good, because like I said, they in bushes they they feel I think they feel it more than they hear it but the sound of that braid going over the limbs as you're working it so we'll experiment that's what practice is for get some bites and kind of experiment see what they like what they don't like see what gets a little bit bigger bite maybe and uh, go from there Wrapping up day one of practice here at Ray Roberts. It went pretty good. Um, I really got on the, the, the brush or bush bite, bush flipping bite on the bank uh, pretty early. Um, I thought that would be the case whenever we crossed the dam and I first saw the lake and it was three and a half foot high. There was a lot of cover in the water. Um, but there are key stretches. You, you can go a long time without bites. So we found a few good areas that we got some, some bites in. Uh, didn't set the hook much caught a couple quality fish and then shook the rest of them off so don't really know what we got but uh i feel really good going into the rest of the week and uh it's good to have at least a good start to practice and have an idea what's going on um, I, that's more than i can say for a lot of our tournaments you know sometimes it's a grind when we get out here to, to figure anything out and uh so we got some, some good momentum going into the rest of the week and uh, hopefully we'll figure a little bit more out each day and piece the puzzle together.
day two, classic practice. Um, it's raining, and we had sunshine. It was hot yesterday, today. Looks like it's gonna rain about all day. Um, had a decent day of practice yesterday. Um, found some fish in the bushes. You know, it's like three and a half foot high, and it's actually still coming up. So that's good to a, to a T, really. Um, we don't want it to come down. If we come, if it comes down, we want it to come down just a little bit. Um, we don't want it to get crazy high, but we really want it to just kind of stay where it's at because that hasn't been the case this year. This year we've had water come up, go down. It's been crazy, but uh, I think if it'll stay where it is right now, we'll we'll have a pretty good little tournament. Um, had some some good bites yesterday, uh, so I'm. Looking forward to getting back out there today, try to figure some other stuff out, maybe some other areas. So we're gonna get after it and see what we can do. Something with a little bit of black and blue in it. Caught the best color ever. Really black and blue and green. But see the hole right there in the in the keeper. And you slide it on. You put your toothpick through the the bait and the keeper, and so it makes the keeper like you know that wide. And it won't come off. You'll you'll tear the pinchers up or whatever before you have to do it, but. Like skipping a jig or you know doing something like this. That's pretty. Lake level is 636, which is about a tenth of a foot higher than it was when we started practice. So, so far, my worst fear of it falling and those fish leaving the bushes is not happening. So, as long as, uh, you know, the, I guess it keeps raining, it can't fall anymore. It, it poured last night. So, we're going to have plenty of stuff to flip at, I think, come Derby Day. Should be uh, should be more of the same of what we've seen in practice, which is unique for us this year. We've uh, we've experienced some pretty wide changes from practice to the event. So we'll see what happens. All right, here it is, day one. 
Bassmaster Classic. You know, you never take one of these for granted. It's uh, it's always a blessing to make it here. Uh, but this is my fourth one, and we ain't just satisfied with just being here anymore. Um, we're gonna let it all hang out today and uh, and see what happens. Uh, we're gonna fish for five big bites, and uh, that's what it takes. It's a three-day event. Unlike our Elite Series events, which are four days, it's gonna take some weight for three days to win this one. And uh, there's no no trophies for second. We're going for that number one spot this week. Nothing else matters. If you if you don't win this one, you might as well just take it to the house. So we're gonna leave it all out there and uh, leave it in God's hands, and we'll make it happen. Bassmaster Classic here at Lake Ray Roberts uh, from Boat 29. Wind's blowing a little bit this morning out of the south, uh, so it's got to take some of those areas out of play with the wind pounding in on them, but uh, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good day. We're going to have bright, clear skies, so I think they'll get up in the bushes really good. Um, you, know, you can't win the tournament today, but you can lose it. So we're looking for 18 plus today stay in contention to win. I really like to bust a big bag today and uh, you know, kind of just keep that momentum going for the rest of the week. But um, we're going to get after it. We're going to dive some nickels jigs and some big bite fighting frogs and some bushes and hopefully we can get us a couple bites. That's how we'll get started. We'll get one in a boat, number one. Come on, you go to bass, son. That's how you start the bass, that's the classic, son. Yeah. <laughs>
Bassmaster Classic here. Um, we're getting ready to launch the boats. We got a bad storm coming in. It's typical. Uh, so we might delay the takeoff a little bit, but had a decent day yesterday at 1610. Um, had one of the big bites that I got that I may actually got into the boat. Um, had three other ones that I left swimming out there, um, but we're in fifth place. We're ready for this test. I mean, we're just gonna go fishing. We're in fifth place going into day two of the Bassmaster Classic. So we didn't lose the tournament yesterday. Um, we're still in it, we still have a shot. We just got to get them in the boat today, get them in the boat tomorrow. Um, we're gonna have a live camera today. It's gonna be the first time that bass fishing has ever been broadcasted live on a network channel. So it's a huge day in bass fishing itself. So hopefully today we can get out there and, and get them in the boat and catch that 20 to 22 pound bag um, to get back even where we need to be going into Sunday. Yes! <laughs> That's one of them. That's one of them. That's gonna be a cool shot. <laughs> Dude, you got nerves of steel. You didn't even flinch. He's kind to the cameraman. <laughs> well, then, these are supposed to be bigger. Yeah. They're bigger in Texas. Yeah, yeah, everything's bigger in Texas. That's what I was told. Come on, I've got to get a big bite today. I think we're about to go somewhere we've never been. Just put the troll motor down and go until it's time to go in. Yes! Mm. We got to go too, bro. I'm talking about a freaking clutch. Come here, big baby. Freaking clutch, son. Which one's smallest? Four. Four. 
What a freaking cold, Russ. What a freaking cold. Last minute, son. Give me some. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're going to work tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, what a, what a clutch fish catch. Hell yeah. Give me one more time, bro. Just wrapped up day number two of uh, Bassmaster Classic. It was a grind today. I mean, so tough. We didn't get that morning bite where we caught most of our fish yesterday, and it, it really showed, I think, with everybody um, just how tough it was without getting that morning bite. But we were fortunate enough, we got two good bites. Um, got one bite literally on the last cast, um, right before we had to go in, and it made a huge difference. Uh, so hopefully we stay in that top 10 um, if we go out tomorrow and, and catch a really big bag to have a shot at it. I think we're going to fish some new water tomorrow and uh, just kind of go for it. I mean, you don't, nobody remembers second here. Nobody remembers, you know, top 10s or anything like that. It's, you either win or you don't. So we're going to get us a game plan tonight and get after the welcome for Drew Cook. day two here at the classic um you know yeah. we had a two hour delay we had a bunch of storms come through and they were extremely severe and i don't know if that's what caused it or it got extremely hot after and the water temperatures crept up and you know the low 80s and they were in like the mid 70s um but i just couldn't get bit I couldn't get enough bites to make a good decision or a bad decision i started on the place where I got 17 keeper bites the first morning in about an hour and a half and had zero bites there and then rolled on to my next three places and there was boats sitting. Uh, the place fished kind of small when it got churned up everybody was kind of looking for some clear water and you know I was constantly fishing behind people and then that teamed up with you know the fish you know basically shutting down I got three keeper bites and landed two of them. Um, you know, I think if I'd have got that that one that I broke off, I got excited. It I'd gone so long without a bite. You know, I pitched in a bush and one jumped all over it, and I slack line set the hook and broke it off. It was a stupid mistake on my part, but if I would have caught that one, I, I would have made you know day three. I feel like, but all in all, we'll take it. We'll take it as a learning experience and. Uh, you know, we got two more elite events to make it and, and have a shot at this thing next year, and I'm excited to get that rolling. Um, but anytime you can make it to the Bassmaster Classic, it's, you've had a good, a, a really good strong year. So, um, you know, that's all I can take away from this one, and we'll just keep trying to make the next one. How does it feel to be in the top 10 of the top bass fishermen in the world with a chance? 
to be the top guy. You know, that I've said it all week, that's all I could ever ask for is to be in the top ten going into championship Sunday and have the opportunity to win. It might be that I need, I mean, a great day, but I could still have the opportunity to win, and that's all I could ask for. Being here in itself is, you know, probably one of the hardest things you can do. Um, fishing for a living, being gone from your family, the amount of stress that you put on yourself. I'm only 19 years old, I just look this old. But. All right guys, Championship Sunday, the Bassmaster Classic on Ray Roberts. You know, we're in seventh place. Um, we're seven pounds behind the lead, but that's one flip here. There's so many seven pounders and big ones in here that we, we actually still have a shot. So we're gonna swing hard today just in case they throw a fastball and uh, you know, see if we can do it. I mean, we've got nothing to lose, so we're gonna try do all we can do to get that you know 30 pound bag and, and make a run at it. We've got all day today, no weather, it's gonna be perfect, you know, calm, not as much wind, so it's gonna be ideal conditions for what we're doing. So we're fixing to do our pre-tournament interviews and uh, we're gonna get out of here. Hey, hey, look, everybody with it. I see my heavy, I move it steady right through the city, lift it. My foot up on the gas, get a better way of watch you on the Michelin. Ties tied away, better ride that or you swimming with the fishes. Try not to get offended. My spaceship is coming, my base steady rumbling. I'm facing my drugs, so I space out my problems. It's coming together. I'm pacing my steps, and it's so crazy. Your patience, the time at work, yo, it's a back. I'm true to this city. You can tell by the rapper, truly get it. Look, no lie, I'm high. Perk smoke all in my eyes. I can barely see you through the shade. The shade on my shine. You focus on my step, you move a bit. Look forward to seeing you in the Elite Series and look forward to seeing you back in the class. I like the uh, country school 